to get a full understanding of our leader's vision. He has a great vision for this jurisdiction. And today, the unfolding and making it plain in layman's terms, where you can understand where all of the various departments and each of us fit into his strategic plan for this jurisdiction. And since you missed it today, and some of you were blessed to hear a snippet of the beautiful presentation this afternoon, which was very, at points, indicting, but also informational and exciting, and it caused us to give pause and do some inner reflections on what is it that we can do to see that our jurisdiction grows. Amen? I said that this may be the second jurisdiction, but we're what? We're what? We're number one. Amen. And let us embrace on the girls and take it as our responsibilities to see that our leader's vision is, is brought to fruition. Amen. And the only way you're going to do that is that you understand it. So tomorrow, come and be a part of the sessions that we will be having. Amen? Amen? I love you with the love of God. And I pray for you. I believe you pray for me. God bless you. I was told last night that if Elder James Sanders can uh, preside over the service with a walking stick, I should be able to preside over the service tonight with a cough and a cold. Right. Amen. So you gave me some motivation on tonight, Brother Sanders. Amen. Again, thank you. Uh, God for each of you. Thank God that our leaders are going to you on the show. I was there. I was there. Now we do have a Elder Mark Benson. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand of prayer. And every time I get up, there's a song I like to sing. It's just, it, it, it's, it's a praise that everybody knows and that everybody ought to want to sing. And it simply says, I need the oil.
we ask that you bless us and hide us behind your cross. We thank you for all things and we receive all things as finished. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. I, I tell you, I, I just thank God. I know that the house has been beautifully addressed by, uh, by our state mother. But I, I just want to thank Bishop Anderson for an opportunity. Uh, let, let me just say that I've been preaching for a long time, but sometimes you can preach a long time and never, never preach in a state meeting. So I thank my bishop for this opportunity. And, and even more rare is for a bishop to call you personally and say, I want you to speak. Oh, so y'all ain't hearing me. I, I, I know we had not shout yet, but still, I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. And since I'm here to give an inspirational address, I'm trying to inspire you by me being inspired. Amen. And we honor uh, Madam Anderson and, 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 of course, our state mother and to the bishop staff of, of superintendents and to our guest speaker tonight, uh, Bishop-designate Matthew Brown. Amen. And to all of the people of God. Yes. Now that we got that out of the way. Yes. If you will follow me just really briefly. Two scriptures tonight I want to inspire you with. First one is Ephesians 1 and 3. Ephesians 1 and 3. And while you, some of you are getting that one, someone else may want to run to 2 Peter 1 and 3. These two scriptures, I believe, are going to hopefully inspire you. You know, as I was thinking about it while you're turning to it, I, I was thinking about this. What do we do to inspire the, the people of God? What do we do to inspire the people of God? Well, if you want to inspire people who love music, what do you do? You play music. If you want to in, uh, inspire people who love sports, what do you do? You put on a game. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said the Cowboys. I don't know about that, but anyway. <laughs> so, so whatever you love, that's what you use to inspire yourself. So if you are the people of God, you ought to be inspired by the word of God. Because I found out that you can't love God if you don't love the word. Because the Bible says that in the beginning, Y'all might as well get with me because I'm in high gear right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to miss anything. Uh, as I said, the, the first scripture that we're going to look at is Ephesians 1 and 3. Let me put my eyes on here. That might help. And it reads thusly. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Let, let me read that one more time. Somebody wasn't inspired. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, right then, somebody should have just, just got up and ran around this room right now. But I guess we're going to have to read another one. So let's, let's go to 2 Peter, the first chapter and the third verse as well. And let me read what it says. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So just for a few moments, I just want to encourage you with, with these words. Just look at somebody next to you and tell them, you got it all. You got it all. Hashtag no limits. No limits. I, I, I got to share with you that hashtag no limits because it, it's a revelation that came to New Calvary Temple, Church of God in Christ. Shout, shout back, New Calvary. Before the beginning of the year, one of our uh, uh, missionaries uh, came and she gave a word. And that word was hashtag no limits. Yes. 
and it has become our theme for the year because God has taken the limits off of everybody. As a matter of fact, there never were any limits. The only limits that we put on ourselves is the limits that we put on ourselves. So I want you to share in the vision of New Calvary Temple. Hashtag no limits. Last night I, I heard a message that, that just really inspired me that talked about no rules and no religion. Well, this is along the same vein because the scripture is telling us that he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. You can't get past all. You can't get past everything. He's given us everything. If he's given us everything, why are we still praying for stuff we think we don't have? If, if you want knowledge, he already gave it. You want the Holy Ghost? He gave that. Do you, what, what is it that you want? Financial blessing? He's already given it. The only thing you got to do is begin to agree with God. You know how I know you're not agreeing with God? Because ain't nobody running yet. When we begin to agree with God, we'll, we'll get happy and, and when nobody says a word. You'll get happy because you're just thinking about the manifestation of God when it comes. You're not asking for anything. You already know you got it. Yeah, it's, it's easy. It's easy to, to look into the future and talk about what you know is coming. But what about when you know you already got it? It's already here. You need healing? It's, it's right here, right now. He already gave it. The Bible, I, you know, I get so tired of people quoting scriptures incorrectly. The Bible says that by his stripes, we were. Well, ain't nobody going to get with me, I see. It. We were healed. That's past. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not future, it's past tense. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna like this, but I'm telling you the truth. It's past tense. You got to already know that it's already done. We say all the time, it's already done. It's already done. But, but then you go and start praying and asking for stuff. Oh my God. Why don't you just believe with me that it's already done? I wish I had just two or three people who would stand up on their feet in here and say, it's already done. already done. I, I wish I had someone who would just believe God right now for your healing. Believe God now for your finances. Believe God now for your church. Believe God for your pastor. Oh, come on, believe God for the bishop. <laughs> Amen. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. One thing is just like another. You got, look, I was healed from diabetes. Y'all can sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I, I was healed from diabetes. Y'all, who, who do y'all know lately that been healed from diabetes? Anybody? Anybody? All right, all right. Back there, I see a hand. Look, diabetes is just like cancer. It's just like a brain tumor. It doesn't matter because God sees it all as the same thing. Too easy. <laughs> is there anything that God can't do? Then why, look, this is what he said to the children of Israel. He said, you will not go into the promised land. Why? Because of your unbelief. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so why is it that we're not healed from our afflictions? Because of your unbelief. Why don't we have a church full of folks? Because of your unbelief. Okay, I, I, my time is just about out. But look, I, what I want to do is I want to inspire you tonight. That when we leave, this, matter of fact, don't even start when we leave. Right now, start believing God for everything. This is, this is the last thing. This, this is the year 2020. So the number 20 in the Bible is significant because what it does is it symbolizes a period of perfect waiting. Somebody didn't hear what I said. And I'm talking to you who have been waiting. See, Jacob waited 20 years to get his wives and his stuff. How long have you been waiting? 
Yeah, yeah. This is 2020. Now it's time for the it's time for the manifestation. Look, Jacob didn't just wait. He didn't just lay down and sit down. He worked while he was waiting. While you're working and you've been waiting, now it's 2020 and it's time for you to get your reward. Now you take that faith we just got done talking about and you apply it to what you've been waiting on. Oh my God. If I just had three or four, five people in here who would say, I'm going to get what I've been waiting on. Everybody say thank the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise and tell him thank you. Anybody come to praise God? Anybody come to lift him up? He said, if I, if I be lifted up from this earth, I draw men unto me. The joy of the Lord is your what? Help me say, I come to glory.
Assignment, some of them have auxiliary assignments. But out of those 300 plus men, there is one that I know of that came up from the ranks. And we all know him. He's a great leader. He's from Moralton, Arkansas. And he got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost as a child. I believe that when he was at his graduation ceremony or practicing his graduation ceremony, he got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And uh, several years later, the Lord has blessed him to be the leader. The leader of the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction. Brothers and sisters, come on, if you would. Come on, come on, let's give a hand. And a great round of applause. Our great leader. Come on, let's hear it. For his eminence. The right reverend. Frank Jefferson Anderson Jr. Come on, help me say God bless our leader. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. Lift your hand and say, I'm saved. 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 If you're really saved, tell your neighbor, I'm saved. By his power. Testimony about the goodness of the Lord. Share it with your neighbor. Come on, right now. Amen. Share it. Come on. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all He's done for me, my soul, my soul. Financial secretary 
of the Church of God in Christ sent out uh, all the jurisdictions with all the jurisdiction done in the report for the national church. Would you whisper to somebody and tell them that we came in number five? Amen. Amen. We came in number five. Amen. And we thank God and it's because of you because of the great leaders that we have in this jurisdiction. Praise the Lord with all of them. Our Bishop Rudolph, would you stand? Come on, clap your hands for him. Praise the Lord, thank you. Father God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for the ones that have to give. We thank you for the ones that have not, God. God, we're praying that you would just move on the next time that they will have to give. In Jesus' name we pray and thank God. Amen. Amen. Didn't we enjoy the service on today, the training sessions on today, those that were here? Come on, let's give the presenters a hand on today. On tomorrow morning, we will begin the the uh, the uh, workshop agendas from 9 until 9.30 will be the intercessory prayer and devotion. And then at 9.30 until 9.55, we will hear from our bishop, our leader. We will go directly into the vision strategy and ministry planning and the department and all of the auxiliary units will be breaking up. Or should I say they, should, they will be having breakout sessions, I believe I'm correct on that, uh, departments auxiliary units, district superintendents, pastors and elders, there will be breakout sessions from 9.40 a.m. until 11.40 a.m. And then at 11.40 we will have the recap and prepare for lunch. Uh, lunch from 12 until roughly 1 o'clock and at 1 o'clock until maybe 3 p.m. will be the jurisdictional assembly. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we want to thank God for the Greater New Bible Way Church family. Amen. 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 Uh, they have a concession stand in the back, so you do not, not leave in our go. formal attire. We're not going to be in our Class B. Uh, Bishop is asking that we, all of the men, wear the black suits and, and suits and ties. And uh, Mother, any directions from for the sisters on tomorrow night? Can they dress up how they want to, Bishop? Mother said, and Bishop said, y'all dress up how you want to. Just wear some clothes tomorrow, right? <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Y'all too deep. Y'all too deep. Y'all too deep. Amen. Just, just come on. Just come on out. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for the word. Bishop is coming back to introduce our speaker. Thank God. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, 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 the speaker's guest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The speakers, there were some people that drove, uh, uh, Bishop uh, Brown drove, and I want them to stand, uh, Dr. Hamilton and, and the other brothers that came with him, amen. And then on tomorrow night, brothers and sisters, it's the official night. Yes, sir. We're going to support our bishop and our leader on tomorrow night. So all of the directives have, have gone out concerning the very the, the special offering, so on and so forth. But this is our leader. This is our leader. And he represents us in the national church. And so we want to bless him very good on tomorrow night. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, let's give it up for Bishop Anderson. God bless you, Mr. Bishop Rudolph, and to all of you. We have in our midst tonight, I think, a very prolific preacher, yes. prolific yes. And uh, he has a ministry, a ministry, and have his own app. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you have, you have just go to the app store, and, and uh, is that M M L B Ministry? Amen. And you, you know, you can follow him on his app. Praise the Lord, which lets you know we don't have just anybody in the house. 
Reaching people, changing lives. Everybody said reaching people, changing lives. That's what he's all about. He's a now name preacher with old school, old holiness message. Amen. But he's a now day preacher. He had gotten outside of the box, but did not leave the box. And have not gotten laws from the box. Changing lives. Amen. Not only he's uh, just been selected and appointed as a bishop designate, and uh, he will be over the, De the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I got you. Amen. And uh, it said that Dr. Matthew Brown is profiled in the new book, Radical Revolutions, written by Bishop Tommy Reed and Pastor Al Warner as a radical revolutionary exhibition kingdom, exhibiting kingdom principle for city transformation. Changing lives where they are. Amen. And we thank God that we was able to get him to come to be a, our guest for today. Spoke this afternoon. Wasn't he wonderful? Amen. You that heard him, praise the Lord. And uh, he will be coming after the choir would have ministered to us. We're so glad, Bishop, that you was able to come and to drive that far because you wanted others to come with you. That's wonderful. And you are who you are because of who you are. Amen. Don't lose what you got. When you get your chain and when you get the ring, don't let it change you. Don't be chained to the chain. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. The choir is coming under the, the leadership direction of uh, Superintendent President Bond. God bless the choir and the musicians. And when they finish, we're going to stand all over the room and we're going to say, God bless Bishop Matthew Brown. Amen. And if we don't use the word designate, tell them that Bishop said, just call it Bishop Brown.
bless the Lord in this house. You are the source, come on here, of our strength. You are the strength of our life. And I lift my hands. Come on, come on, lift them up. In total praise. So Father, with our hands lifted up, we bless you. We thank you that you called us to this moment. Now speak so clearly and so distinctly that it is unmistakably you. We pray for grace in this moment, strength, Father, and clarity of speech. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. While you remain standing the word of the Lord, simple verse of scripture found in the King James Version from the 37th Division of Psalm. Yes, in the 37th verse. It says, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. In your planning conference, I want to speak from this particular subject. I'm saved. Sanctified yes, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, and that's holiness that makes a difference. Amen. When you tell somebody I've got holiness, that makes a difference. Be seated in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. We honor the angel of this house and of this region, the bishop. Anderson and for all that God is doing in his life and in the life of his lovely wife we give honor and deference to our supervisor of women we honor you to all of the administrative assistants superintendents pastors elders deacons deaconess to the choir to the ushers to the musicians we honor you because all of us are called to make a difference. If holiness is going to mean anything, it must mean that we are difference makers. Because otherwise, God has wasted his time. Come on, stay with me. What am I going to do for you long? If holiness means anything, it means that there has been a difference made. And then we are called to make difference. And because you are saved, because you are sanctified, because you are Holy Ghost filled, you are a difference maker. So it means that no matter where you go, that it should not remain the same when you leave. I'm not telling you that you have hocus pocus power. I'm not telling you about spiritualism. I am telling you that you have been picked on to be picked out that you might make a difference right where you are. It doesn't matter about making a difference in the world if you can't make a difference at home. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Charles Hatton Spurgeon made this point. He says, good men are men of mark and are worth of study. Upright men are marvels of grace and worth beholding. And there's nothing like a holy man or woman or child because you have the mark of God. We have been churching so long that we have disconnected the distinction of holiness. We flipped it into a culture and we we poured it into an acronym. We are no longer the church of God in Christ, but we are coaching. I'm here to tell you I'm church of God in Christ because Kojic can be a club Kojic come on here can be, can be 
be your thing. But the church of God in Christ is what God gave to Bishop Mason. A body of baptized believers that earnestly carried on their lives the mark of God. And then so much so that we began to testify, as, as Dr. Hamilton said in our opening, that I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But as your bishop is calling you into this planning conference, his theme is that God would call holy people with holy living to make a difference. It doesn't matter if we're holy and we're not making a difference. Jesus carried the very mark of his father on him. In everywhere he went, he was a difference maker. He changed atmospheres. Matter of fact, he was, he was, he was obligated to do that because he said he was the son of God. And the only proof of his sonship was the difference that he made where he went. Yeah, because we've seen other great men. We've heard other great orators. We've, we've known of other great leaders. We have seen phenomenal philosophers, but we are in awe of difference makers. Ask the woman with the issue of blood, is Jesus different than the doctors that she spent 12 years bleeding and, and spent all of her money? But when she heard that Jesus was passing by, when she heard that there was a difference maker about to cross her path, she decided no matter how down she was, that I'm going to get in the press and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment because he's a, he's a difference maker. He just didn't show up for nothing. Purpose of life is not to be happy. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, he said, it, it is to be useful. It's not happy. We're so concerned about being happy. Are you happy? And we're, we're, split, we're, 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 we're caught up with the emotion of happiness that we've lost our usefulness. We seem to be a lot of, we seem to be useless and happy. And then happy because we're useless. But not happy, why come on here, in our helpfulness. The thing that ought to light every believer up is the fact that not only are we here, we are useful. Not only are we useful, we're making a difference. Not only are we making a difference, we're creating change. And for that reason, I'm happy. I'm saved by his, come on, power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet. My joy is complete because I'm saved and I'm glad about it. Touch somebody say, I'm saved and I'm glad about it. I'm saved and I'm, come on, I'm glad about it. He goes on to say that to be compassionate, to have, and to have it make some difference that you've lived and lived well. We shout at funerals and we dance because people have moved to heaven. But our dance should be because they made a difference. <laughs> Within 24 hours of my elevation on Monday in the General Assembly, my mom, who has been suffering with multiple myeloma, bone cancer, the strongest woman I've ever known in my life, my emotional center and rock. Within 24 hours after being announced, Talk to my sister, my mother is now in ER. And Monday after I was elevated, General Board Bishop Cedric Daniels called her from his phone in his car. And my mother was sleeping, my sister said she's asleep. He said, don't worry, don't bother her. Lisa, my sister calls back on my cell phone and says, mommy says she wants to talk to Bishop Daniels. And so I took my phone and handed it to him and heard them talk, but wasn't thinking too much. Thought it was a kind of a long conversation, never said a word, and I just moved on. Got to the hotel, packed my stuff, checked on my mom. She's in the ER. Something's wrong. 
got to the airport to fly home Tuesday and get a note or a message, a call from my sister, you got to come to Buffalo because mommy's coded. Couldn't figure out how to get to Buffalo from the airport because the first thing I thought about was trying to run because I needed to get to a difference maker. District missionary, member of our church, said, Pastor, you've got to get on this plane because we're boarding for Atlanta. And while I'm in line, I'm, I'm, I'm purchasing a flight on Delta to get off the plane, to get on another plane. And so I get on the other plane. And I pray and I said, Lord, please don't let my mother die until I see her. <laughs> get there at 1.15 and... My mother had already put in a DNR, but they couldn't find it. And because they couldn't find it, they did minimal procedure to keep her alive until I could whisper in her boy, in her ear, to let her know that her baby boy is here. And I held my mother until she took her last breath at 315. Bishop Daniels came to the funeral because she died Wednesday morning. I was appointed Monday. She dies basically 24 hours later, comes to the funeral, and then reveals to the church the conversation. He said, I never worried about Mother E because every time Matt would call, I'd say, she's all right, she's all right. Because I didn't know that years had gone by that he had said to my mother that I don't care what your condition is, you won't die until you see your son, a prince of the Lord's church. When he called her and she called him, he then revealed that she said to him, I will not see you nor him, but I want to thank you when I get to heaven. It's because she was a difference maker. Yes. Yes, she wasn't there to hold up space. Yes, come on. Beloved, I'm using this, this pain and this grief to share with you that you are called to change lives. You're not called to do anything else but to change lives. That is the burden that we must bear. Leaders, that is the, the stirring in your spirit. That is the thing that ought to be in the pit of your stomach. That you cannot sleep until you complete the mark of God upon you. That is holiness. That makes a difference. Historically, it's interesting that John Wesley is, that, is the author, the architect of this sacrificial living we call sanctification. So I love to say that, uh, I guess I may be Church of God in Christ, but I'm, I'm Wesley. Y'all know that one? William Seymour taught us, and, and, and watch this, he coached, uh, 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 he was coached by Parham, but William Seymour literally was the father of Pentecostalism in our faith. So, so, so yes, I, I, I'm Wesley, and I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> I speak in tongues. Yes, sir. You ain't go like this, but I'm charismatic too. Because I believe in miracles. I'm evil. I'm evangelical. Because I believe in going to the ends of the earth, preaching the gospel. And all of that is wrapped up in classical Pentecostalism. Because in everything, God has called us to be holy. Right. Ain't nobody talking to me. Ain't nobody talking to me. So we testify that we're saved. That's what he did. Then we testify that we're sanctified. That's what we ought to be doing. And that's living holy. Salvation is of the Lord. Sanctification is a grace he gives to us to separate us from the world. So that the world can see that there is a difference between me and him. I know y'all like cosmetic holiness. You want to dress it up and dress it down. And you want to declare that somebody is holy based upon what they're wearing or what they're not wearing. But that was not in the mind of God. He never had a costume, a dress, a tie, a suit, a color. He never had any of that in mind. He said that you're going to be holy and your life is going to be the light to darkness. Holiness 
is the mark of God. Holiness is that distinction in you that they say, what's up with you? Holiness is the fact that you can hold it together when other people are falling apart. Holiness is the wisdom of God that he downloads into your spirit in a very single moment, in a nanosecond when nobody knows what to say because you're connected and you bear the mark of the Lord Jesus upon you. When you touch three people and say, you look just like God. If he's completed the work, then we don't have to work. We just have to walk. You're too busy working when you just need to be walking. Because it's already done. He's already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So you don't have to work at salvation. Work at sanctification. Work at holiness. He's already gifted that to you. So now the only thing you have to do is walk it out. Walk it out and show somebody this is what holiness looks like. This is what holiness looks like under pressure. This is what holiness looks like in bad situations. This is what holiness looks like elevated. This is what holiness looks like educated. This is what holiness looks like making money. This is what holiness looks like being a business person, an entrepreneur, a community advocate, a politician. Sorry, y'all. Y'all don't see. Watch this, David. David, David in, his, in his reflection. David in his reflection starts Psalm 37. And he says, uh, fret not thyself. Because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut as the grass and we come on here. David starts this song, this, we don't know whether it's a meditation or a song, but what we do know is that David is now in a reflective mode. This is not warrior David. This is not take on Goliath David. This is not sinning David. This is not, this is not intercessor David. This is not David in the cave. This is not David encouraging men. 
This is not David facing Goliath. This is not David running from Saul. This is not David worrying, playing the heart and playing the devil, a spiritual, a, a satanic spirit off of Saul. This is David, now old, having experience, dipped in wisdom, smeared, hallelujah, with victory. Uh, testifying with scars. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all don't like it. You see, our problem is that we don't testify with scars. We only have, we only have Instagram testimonies. We, we, we only have Facebook victories. Oh, don't mess with me. We only have Twitter theology. But, but we don't have scar testimony. We don't get up and say, listen, the enemy got me here, but let me show you what the Lord has done. Come on, say, give me some Bible. Say, give me some Bible. Jesus shows up to the disciples while they're sequestered by fear after his resurrection. Thomas is jacked up because Thomas says, I've seen what Calvary has done to my Savior. I've watched historically men and women die on a cross. And I've seen what they did to Jesus. I saw that they beat him. I saw that they, that they pulled his beard out. I, I saw that they put a crown of thorns on his head. I, I was watching while his system was shutting down. I saw him stick a spear in his side. I was there. I smelled the blood. It was a stingy place. It was nothing that was romantic. And he says, because I saw all of it, I can't unsee it. Yeah. All right. While you're ready to condemn Thomas to hell, watch this, Thomas had trauma memory. He was traumatized. He was suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. Thomas was jacked up. And Thomas said, he said, hey, let's go to church. He says, no, I'm done. Because everything that I believe has now been crushed because of what I saw. Watch this, watch this. Jesus shows up. Thomas says, I won't believe unless I, I see him. Unless I see his scars. Jesus shows up and say, hey, here I am. Behold the, 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 my hands. This is where they put the nails. Look, look, right here. Here's my side. You know what I, what I get from that? That Jesus was testifying with his scars. There's some stuff you trying to tell people about victory. They just want to see your scars. Were you an alcoholic and the Lord delivered you? Were you a drug addict and you came out? Were you messed up? And do you have any scars that you've been through anything? Don't talk to me about victory until I see your battle scar. We got to go. Come on, have a seat. We got to go. David, David is reflecting. David, he starts off by saying, fret not. Yeah. The reason why you don't have to worry about this is because now it's all it's over. So, so he writes from his memory. And, and, when, and then he begins to give some other instructions that we'll talk about later. He talks about committing yourself, delighting yourself, trusting in the Lord. He goes through this piece, but at, at, in verse 37, he says, mark the perfect man. He says, I want you to see what holiness looks like. I want you to see what difference makers look like. And behold the upright. For the end of that man, come on here, is peace. So, so pastor, uh, get to it. Um, tell me, what difference does holiness make? Well, uh, I, I have our local church, as we're on this 31-day fast, I have us reading again the book by Craig Groeschel called Soul Detox. I says, I would recommend this book to you that you would walk people through it. Soul detox. He lifts up, he lifts up three important issues about the need for us to detox our soul. So 
Uh, we pick up toxins in the air. People are moving now to organic stuff. They, you know, it's no longer buying lotions that are filled with various additives but because we're breathing in toxic air. But, but our soul needs to be detoxed. Can, can I just teach for about two minutes? See, the soul is comprised of our emotion, our will, and our intellect. Uh, you're happy because your soul is happy. And watch this, you think because the intellect is found in your soul. Ah, our emotions are in desperate need of emoting or demonstrating themselves because that's in our soul. But yet, our soul needs to be detoxed. Two natures beat within my breast, one is cursed and the other blessed. One I love and one I hate, but the one I feed will dominate. Come on, because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7